In this video, I am going to talk about automation. Actually, we will learn about the automation, data models, and protocol information. Also, we will learn about the Yang data model with ITF and open config, along with netconf and restconf protocols. In addition, we will learn about the model driven telemetry and how it can be used to gather information from network devices. First, let me to introduce the network APIs and protocols. You know that in previous video, we learned about the APIs. Here we are reviewing again about the application programming interfaces. Application programming interfaces or API are simply interfaces for software systems to talk to one another. An API has a set of requirements that describe how applications can communicate between themselves. For years, users have been communicating with applications through user interfaces or UIs by viewing information and requesting data from the application. When a software system wants to communicate with another software system, that is where APIs come into play. However, we as users can also use APIs to talk to application just in a more software way instead of an, a traditional UI or user interfaces way. Also, protocols are used to transport information between the systems using netconf and restconf. We will learn about these protocols with more detail in this video. About the network APIs and protocol concept, you know that APIs can help application developers enable features that end up helping end users. For example, a mobile application such as Yelp pulls location data from Google Maps via API calls to provide list of location of restaurants for Yelp's end user. Again, this is an example of a software system that wants to communicate with another software system. As another example, network management system or NMSS communicate with simple network management protocol or SNMP to request and receive information from SNMP enabled devices. SOAP or Simple Object Access Control is a major standard from Microsoft that is used to build web service on the internet. SOAP uses HTTP to transport message using XML syntax. Also, we learn about the representational state transfer or REST is, is an API framework for simple web service that also uses HTTP methods such as a GET, POST or PUT and DELETE. REST is a popular due to its performance, reliability, simplicity and scalability. Also, we know about the netconf. You know that the network configuration protocol or netconf, which was standardized in 2006, leverages SSH and XML based encoding. Netconf defines the transport and communication protocol and uses Yang for data. Google RPC or gRPC provides a general open source framework. It is a functional subset of Net NetConf and uses JSON representation. gRPC or Google RPC also supports unstructured data using the CLI and offers high performance. About the RESTConf, the RESTConf protocol provides a REST-like API for a network. RESTConf, which was standardized in 2017, supports both XML and JSON representation and uses Yang for data. About the evolution of programmability, back in 2003, RFC 3535 was published to provide an overview of a workshop held by the Internet Architecture Board or IAB on network management. The goal was to continue the dialogue started between network operators and protocol developers. One of the notable recommendations from the network operators and developers was that the IETF should focus resources on the standardization of configuration management mechanisms.
Next, in 2006, NetConf was defined in RFC 4741, and again in 2011, it was further defined in RFC 6241. The NetConf protocol provides mechanisms to install, change, and delete network device configuration. All right, now let me to explain a little about the data encoding formats. As systems communicate with each other, there needs to be a structure behind what is communicated. Simple formatted text that is presented with show commands in, on a Cisco device will not work. However, systems can easily parse and work with data that is encoded in XML and also JSON formats. Let me to review a little about the JSON and also XML in this video. JSON or JavaScript Object notation is a lightweight data interchange text format. It is fairly easy to read and write and fairly easy for systems to understand and process. For example, take a look at the syntax that JSON uses for object and arrays. A collection name, value pair, okay, means key value pair. And then we have object, the opening curly bracket, closing curly bracket. And after that, ordered list of values include, for example, array with the uh, opening bracket and closing bracket. Here, as you can see, we have some key value pair. This is the first key value pair and this is the second key value pair. And as you can see here, we have the uh, simple JSON formatted text. I explained the JSON previously in the previous video. About the XML or extensible markup language, it is a markup language similar to HTML that was designed to store and transport data. XML is data wrapped in tags and is both human readable and system readable. For example, notice the tags used to start and end text, beginning and ending text. A text hello world and then a slash text here you don't forget that you should use a slash before the ending tag and also we can the option of hierarchy of tags a start tag is tx and houston and end tag a slash houston and a slash tx okay this figure shows an example of XML for a gigabit Ethernet interface. As you can see, we have the tag of gigabit Ethernet and here a slash gigabit Ethernet. And then name, this is the, uh, for example, value or a string. And this is the a slash name, the ending tag. Okay. IP, a slash IP. Address, a slash address. Primary, a slash primary. And address, a slash address. Mask, a slash mask. This is the XML. With about the XML, XML also we learn uh, more than this in the uh, previous video. All right, about a data model, a data model can be thought of as a well understood and agreed upon way of describing something. A data model describes a control set of data using well defined parameters to standardize the representation of data. Let's consider an example of houses for sale. Here is a possible data model for houses for sale, for, exa for example, location, number of bedrooms, a square feet, total bathrooms, lot size, property type, and also the price. This is the example of data model for selling a house. All right, now let me to explain a little about the model driven programmability stack. Model driven programmability provides several, several advantages, including flexibility and modularity. Model driven programmability is model based, structured, and system friendly. It provides support for multiple model types, from native and common to open config and IETF industry standards. Furthermore, models are decoupled from transport, protocols, and encoding. Model-driven APIs allow for abstraction and simplification. In this figure, the model-driven programmability stack consists of six layers. At the bottom are Yang data models that are both native and open. Next are two transport protocols, SSH and HTTP. Above, that is the protocol layer, including NetConf, RESTConf, and gRPC. The encoding layer has both JSON and XML. The API layer is next with model-driven APIs using 
Yang. Finally, applications are at the top of the stack. We will further learn about several of these components in this video. Let me to review the REST. Web browsers use REST to get and post information to web servers or other systems that use HTTP. The same HTTP request method and responses code are used. Figure, this figure actually shows a create, retrieve, update and delete crude example with the client using HTTP POST, HTTP GET, HTTP PUT and HTTP delete calls along with the response codes coming from the uh, servers. We learned about them previously. Okay, here as you can see, we have uh, the, the create, retrieve, update, and delete. We, sh we send the HTTP post. Okay, and after that, we can uh, for retrieving data, we can use HTTP get. For updating data, we can use HTTP put. And for deleting data, we can use HTTP uh, delete. And here we have different responses. Uh, from the server. This table lists some common HTTP response code. I explained all of them previously, but for now, let me to review. About the success message, it, it messages it starts with two. 200 means request succeeded. 201, the request has been fulfilled, new resource created, as you can see. And 204, the server fulfilled the request but does not return a body. But also, we have some error message, some error related to the client errors or the, uh, for example, server errors. All right, in this section, I'm going to give you more information about the Yang netconf and also restconf. Yang is intervened with netconf and restconf as they are all protocols used to manage configuration and state data. This table lists the Cisco supported products for Yang netconf and also the restconf. Let me to review it. Look at here about the Cisco supported produ uh, products. For example, iOS XR support netconf and Yang. NXOS support netconf. iOS XE support netconf. TAILF Network Control System or NCS support NetConf and Yang. TAILF uh, Configured Agent support NetConf and Yang. Open SDN Controller, Open Daylight support NetConf, Yang, and also the RESTConf. First, I will explain a little about the Yang after that NetConf and finally RESTConf. Yet another next generation or Yang is an ITF standard RFC 6020 data modeling language used to describe the data for network configuration protocols such as NetConf and RESTConf. Yang is extensible enabling the addition of new content to existing data models and new statement to the Yang language. Yang also has a limited scope. It is intended to describe network concepts in a tree structure along with data and types. Yang is intended to be very readable compared to other schema languages. Yang data model can be displayed and represented in a variety of formats, including the following, Yang language, clear text, XML, JSON, and also HTML, JavaScript. This figure illustrates the NetConf Yang stack. A Yang module is a self-contained top-level hierarchy of nodes. A Yang module can also use sub-modules. It uses linkage statements such as import and include. As you can see here, we have module 1 and if here we have import module 2 and also include the sub-module A and also Again, here in the submodule A, we have include submodule X, submodule Y, and submodule Z. Within a module, containers are used to group related nodes. As you can see inside of this module, we have, for example, two container. And within a container, lists are used to identify nodes that are stored in a sequence. As you can see here, we have in the container Y, we have list. And inside the list, each individual attribute is referred to as a leaf. Okay, and attributes are used for things like names or description. Each leaf 
also needs to have an associated type such as boolean or the for example a string this table uh, list the common attribute for leaf values uh, let me to explain about it but you know that the detail of this table is not uh, for is beyond the scope of this video only we are reviewing these attributes you know that we are talking about the attributes of these leaves okay M inside of module we have container inside of container we have multiple lists and each list has multiple leaf and now we are talking about the leaf attributes first about the config this attribute specifies whether this leaf is config is a configurable value true or an operational value false and is inherited from the parent container if not specified it means that assume that you have a, a feature this feature has a value okay uh, and we, we we can't configure it because of that the attribute of config of this leaf will be false but if we have a attribute that we can configure it the uh, config attribute will be uh, uh, true the next attribute is the default it specifies the default value for this leaf and implies that the leaf is optional okay mandatory specify whether the leaf is mandatory true or optional false must specifies the x pass con uh, constraints that will be enforced for this leaf about the type specifies the data type and range of this leaf about the when as indicate a conditional leaf which is pe present only if the x pass expression is true description about the description it provides a human readable definition and help text for the leaf about the reference provide a human readable reference to some other elements or a spec units provides a human readable unit specification for example hertz megabit per second or uh, other uh, specification a status indicate whether the this leaf is current deprecated or obsolete when versioning yang modules consider the following add a revision number at the top update the organization contact and other information do not rename a module or namespace do not remove obsolete definitions and do not reorder data definitions for example in this yang module we have organization and it is recommended to have revision number at the top of the module and also we should update the organization contact and other information and also we should not re rename a module or namespace or remove obsolete definition or reorder the uh, for example data definitions yang is used to describe both device data models and service data models the following are example of the device data model like interface like vlan like acl and the following are example of the service a data model like the layer 3 mpls vpn vrf and also network acl all right now let me to explain a little about the netconf or network configuration protocol netconf is a network management protocol defined by the ietf in rfc 6241 netconf provides rich functionality for managing configuration and state data the protocol operation are defined as remote procedure calls or RPCs for request and replies in XML based representation. NetConf support running candidate and startup configuration data store. The NetConf capabilities are exchanged during session initiation. Transaction support is also a key NetConf feature this table okay as you can see lists some of the key points for three netconf data store running startup and candidate okay as you can see uh, in netconf like the management information based in the snmp we have three type of this data stores running startup and candidate and here uh, uh, as you as you can see we have data stores target of operations may hold entire copy of the configuration not all data stores are supported by devices running config is the only required data store and not all devices are uh, for example writable the, here we can see the um, features or the criteria of these data stores let me to review it again all of them are data stores and all of them are 
target of operations and uh, may, uh, they can hold entire copy of uh, configuration or not all configuration not all data stores are supported by device it means in all device we don't have all of these uh, data stores running config is the only required data store yes this is the only required data store others can be available and can be not available not all devices are uh, writable it means uh, all of these data stores uh, are not writable also the lift figure shows the netconf model which has four layers and how netconf detail map to it as you can see here we have the content layer operation layer rpc layer and transport protocol the transport protocol is ssh the rpc uh, can be rpc or rpc reply remote procedure call the operation can be get get config and also other operations and we have notification and the content is configuration data netconf is a client server protocol and is connection oriented over tcp all netconf message are encrypted with ssh and encoded with xml a netconf manager is a client and a netconf device is a server okay the initial content of the hello message define the netconf capabilities that each uh, site support the yang data model defines capabilities for the supported device in addition other standard bodies and pro, uh, proprietary specification define capabilities this figure provides an example of the netconf hello operation notice that the capabilities are listed and each one has either itf or tailf noted to indicate whether itf or tailf pro proprietary specification define the yang data for the uh, capability here we can see the capabilities and uh, in each of them we have itf or tailf a keyword that define this is the uh, itf capability or tailf proprietary um, capability as i mentioned before netconf is a client server protocol and is connection oriented over tcp all netconf message are encrypted with ssh and encoded with xml okay because of that here we can see the um, pro netconf protocol operations which as you can see use xml based encoding okay let me to review some of them uh, for example in netconf operations we have get config edit config get get a schema lock unlock and close session for example when we want to retrieve all or part of a running configuration and device operational data we can use the get message or when we want to retrieve all or part of a specified configuration we can use get config okay or when we want to retrieve the device schema we can use get schema when we want to load all or part of the specified configuration for example create merge or replace or data we can use edit config or when we want to re request graceful session termination we can use close session or when we want to lock the entire configuration data store that is candidate we can use lock or even we want to remove the lock on the entire configuration data store that is candidate we can use unlock and also we have some other operations in this uh, for example figure you can see that uh, the net conf communication started from the manager to the agent and here connect to the device and say hello you know that with hello we transfer some of the capabilities that we have retrieve capabilities after that investigate available models determine which to use and then compose uh, operations get config you know that get config is using for retrieving all or part of a specified configuration and after that here send message rpc and after that retrieve rpc reply and then uh, this uh, we should we can process the data this is uh, the one example but you know that in netconf we have uh, multiple netconf protocol operations now let me to explain a little about the rest conf rest conf which is defined in rfc 8040 is an http based protocol that provides a programmatic interface for accessing yang model data rest conf uses http operations to provide create retrieve update and delete or crude operations on a netconf data store containing yang data okay restconf is tightly coupled to the yang data model definition 
IT supports HTTP based tools and programming libraries. Okay, RESTConf can be encoded in either XML or JSON. Here is an example of a RESTConf uniform resource look, uh, identifier or URI. As you can see, a slash RESTConf, a slash resource type, a slash Yang module, and then resource. Okay, you know that the RESTConf uses the NetConf data store containing Yang data. RESTConf uses data and operations or RPCs for resource types within the RESTConf URIs. This figure shows a J JSON formatted RESTConf data and RPC operation and their associated URIs. As you can see here, we have two part, data part and operation or uh, RPC part. And here we have the URI, okay? A module my interface, namespace, container, and after that list interfaces uh, we have some key key name leaf name and also leaf admin status i explained about the le uh, leaf previously and after that this is the part of uh, rpc okay and uh, here we have the uri rest conf operation my interface colon flap interfaces okay as you can see flap interfaces this is the flap interfaces and the uri here is the interfaces as you can see Actually, this figure shows JSON RESTConf data illustrating containers and lists with URIs, okay? As you can see here, we have a container, container interfaces, okay? This is the JSON container, list interfaces, a key name, and again, leaf name type is a string. All right, this table shows the RESTConf API crude operation, get, post, put, and delete, and associated URIs. For example, you know that we have the operation of get for the get the re resource. We have the operation of post, create a resource, or invokes an uh, operation, put, replace a resource, delete, re remove the resource, and here we can see the URIs for these operations. All right, now let me to compare the NetConf and also RESTConf. In many respects, uh, NetConf and RESTConf are very similar. They both use the Yang data model and Yang development kits. They both are client server based with the controller being the client or the initiator and the server or receiver being the network element. They both use IETF Yang library to either discover server capabilities, netconf, or list the features the server support, restconf. Netconf and RESTConf both use the concept of data stores, but RESTConf uses the data store defined in the netconf. This figure shows a stack comparison of NetConf and RESTConf. As you can see, there are many similarities, especially in terms of Yang. As you can see, NetConf support only the XML, but RESTConf support both XML and JSON, but about other features, they are same. Let's consider some of the differences between the NetConf and RESTConf. NetConf was developed first in 2006 using XML encoding, and it uses SSH as a transport a protocol. RESTConf was developed approximately 10 years later to support both XML and JSON encoding, and it uses HTTP as a transport protocol. NetConf can deploy across multiple devices by using a network-wide transaction. RESTConf, on the other hand, has no concept of a transaction. A RESTConf call uses HTTP POST, HTTP PUT, UPDATE, or DELETE methods to edit data resources represented by Yang data models. NetConf include the concept of a lock to stop operations while editing the configuration in the candidate data store. RESTConf does not provide the concept of a lock, changes are directly applied. This figure illustrates the TCP IP network frame format showing where NetConf, RESTConf, gRPC, and Yang are present within the IP packet. All right, now let me to explain a little about the IETF OpenConfig and also Cisco Yang model. Yang data models are developed by industry standard bodies such as the IETF and OpenConfig or 
a specific vendor such as Cisco. About the ITF, ITF, the Internet Engineering Task Force is an internet standard body that develops open standards through open processes. The ITF is a large international group of network designers, operators, and vendors and researchers who are focused on the evolution of internet architecture. Their technical work within the ITF is done in working groups organized by topic into several areas. The Yang Model co Coordination Group, for example, has been spending time on the inventory of Yang models in the industry, tooling aspects, training and education of NetConf, Yang, Piang and the model coordination for the ITF. ITF data models are available on GitHub at https colon slash slash github.com slash yang models slash yang. About the open config, it is a group of network operators working on developing programmable interfaces and tools for managing networks in a vendor neutral way using software defined networking concepts and model driven management and operations open config focuses on building consistent sets for no vendor neutral data models written in yang to support operational needs and requirements from various network operators. The data models are developed by OpenConfig are compiled from third-party modules that use OpenConfig requirement. The developed Yang data models combine both configuration and operational data with support from multiple routing vendors such as Cisco, Juniper, and Arista. OpenConfig collaborates with standard bodies and network equipment manufacturers. The goal is for the developed data models to become industry standard interfaces that are widely adopted. OpenConfig data models are available on GitHub at https colon slash slash github.com slash openconfig slash public. About the Cisco Yang models, a Cisco Yang model is a collection of Cisco native, IETF, and OpenConfig Yang models that can be used with Cisco-based platforms. Uh, Cisco has Yang models that are specific to iOS XR, NXOS, and iOS XE Cisco platforms, divided uh, subdirectories on GitHub. Each subdirectory has further OS platform information in a README file. Cisco data models are available on GitHub at https colon slash slash github.com slash yang model slash yang slash tree slash master slash vendor slash Cisco. All right, now let me to explain a little about the model-driven telemetry. Model-driven telemetry is a new concept in network monitoring. It involves continuously streaming data from network devices to subscribers using a push model and providing real-time configuration and state information. You can define what data you want to subscribe to be using standard Yang models and the NetConf protocol. A structured data is published at a defined a cadence or as things change based on the subscri subscription criteria and data type. Third-party application can be used to collect data for monitoring and troubleshooting. Telemetry application subscriptions and their updates are transmitted over the NetConf protocol. A NetConf session is established using an SSH session to a network device. About the streaming telemetry data, it can be used for analysis and troubleshooting purposes to maintain the health of the network. A streaming telem telemetry allows users to direct data to configured receivers, where DevOps engineer can use the real-time operational information to find problems, look into issues, and optimize networks. Using traditional models for collecting network data limits scalability and efficiency. Network administrators have been using tools like SNMP and CLI to get operational data from routers and switches for years. 
However, these methods do not provide automation and do not make it easy to gather useful data from network devices. One of the limitations is the use of the pool model in which a client must request data from network device. The pool model does not scale when there are several network management stations within the network. A push model continuously streams data out of the network device and send it to the client. Telemetry makes the push model possible and enables near real-time access to device monitoring. There are two areas where streaming real-time telemetry data is useful. First, about the traffic optimization. Second, about the preventing troubleshooting. About the tra traffic optimization, when things like link utilization and packet drops in the network are occurring quickly, traffic optimization allows for traffic rerouting, adding and removing links, and making modification to QoS policies. This is faster than with SNMP polling interval and enables quicker response time. This is the first benefit of real-time or streaming real-time telemetry that we call it traffic optimization. The second benefit is the preventing troubleshooting. This type of troubleshooting helps detect and avoid failure situation faster after problematic network events occur. Okay, let me to explain about three methods of streaming telemetry. First, model-driven telemetry. It provides a, mechan a mechanism to stream data from a model-driven tele telemetry capable device to a receiver. The second, cadence-based telemetry, continuously streams operational statistics and state transition at a configured cadence or time frame. And third, policy-based telemetry streams data to a receiver using a policy file that defines the data okay, uh, to a stream and the frequency for getting the uh, data. You know that telemetry is an automated communication process by which measurements are collected and transmitted to receivers for monitoring of the data. Model-driven telemetry replaces the need for periodic polling of network element using SNMP. Instead, it involves a continuous request for information to be delivered to a subscriber or receiver that has an established session with the network device. Data is received either periodically or as objects change via a subscribed set of Yang objects. In RFC 6241 network configuration protocol or netconf explains a Yang push model, which is a subscription and push mechanism for access to Yang database. The Yang push model encompasses all of the data in the configuration and operational databases using the Yang model on the network device. However, a filter needs to be used as uh, for the data as the subscription to all data is not supported. All session is telemetry use netconf sessions which impose any session limitation specific to the netconf implementation. High availability in telemetry for netconf sessions uses SSH to the active switch or a member in a, a switch stack. If a netconf session is broken, a new netconf session must be established including sessions that carry telemetry subscriptions. About the subscription to stream data in model-driven telemetry, the client application requests a subscri subscription to a data set in Yang from the network device. A subscription is an agreement between the subscriber and the subscription service that describes the data to be pushed out. The, subscri the subscription service allows clients to subscribe to the desired Yang data models and then the network device push the data to the receiver per the agreed upon subscription model. There are two types of subscription, periodic and unchanged publication. This figure illustrates subscription in a model-driven uh, telemetry. Let me to explain about two types of uh, publication, the uh, periodic publication and also unchanged publication. 
about the periodic publication the subscriptions that are period periodic or streamed out to the receivers at a specified intervals such as every five seconds with periodic publications the network device continuously sends data for the lifetime of that configured subscription a typical example where this type of periodic subscription is useful is for receiving data from pdu counters on a device this figure shows sample output from the show telemetry ietf subscription command using a period period of the 10 second the period configuration in this figure uh, is for time and is in a centisecond okay which is one over 100 of a second between updates about the unchanged publication and unchanged subscription streams out data only when a change in the data has occurred such as when an interface or a neighbor relationship goes down this type of subscription is useful for when a data value changes occasionally but the information needs to be sent in a timely manner an unchanged subscription capability must be described in a yang module definition in order to prevent erroneous association to a yang subscription it is not recommended to use an unchanged subscription for frequently changing data values such as counters incrementing on an interface all right now let me to explain about two approach dial in approach and dial out approach in dial in mode network device listens until the receiver dials in and sends the initial scene packet to start the tcp connection after the initial tcp connection is established the network device pushes data out to the receiver at the configured interval the network device acts as the server and the receiver is the client don't let the direction of the scene packet threw you off as there is no polling mechanism in model driven telemetry the dialing mode of the subscription is dynamic and terminates only when the receiver cancels the subscription or when the session is terminated dial in mode uses a single channel to communicate via a single transport and protocol for both configuration data and streaming operational data here uh, are two example of methods to request sensor pass in a, a dynamic subscription for example open config rpc and also ios xr mdt rpc first about the open config rpc the subscriber rpc command is used to specify sensor pass and frequency a subsequent cancel rpc command is used to remove the existing uh, dynamic subscription about the ios xr mdt rpc with ios xr rpcs are used to subscribe or cancel configured subscriptions the sensor pass and frequency are part of the telemetry configuration about the dial out approach with dial out mode a network device dials out and sends the initial scene packet to start the tcp connection to the receiver this is the default mode of operation in this mode the network device acts as a as the client and the receiver acts as the server the network device continually attempts to establish a session and a stream data to the receiver that has a valid subscription the dial out mode of subscription is persistent and if a session termination terminates for some reason the network device continuously tries to establish a new session with the receiver every 30 seconds when using tcp dial out open a tcp socket on your receiver and the network device starts the three-way tcp handshake and starts pushing telemetry data across the session no complicated programming libraries are required on the receiver if you are using python you need a simple bind command for the port tcp dial out takes advantage of the benefits of tcp such as reliability fragmentation and reordering and is a great place to start with model driven telemetry